Now when I click my fingers, they change direction. Try and stop your hands from spinning, they spin faster. Try and stop your hands from spinning and they click faster. Really try and stop them and find this spin even faster. Did you enjoy that clip? This week we're talking about, well, maybe a less than perfect induction and suggestions. And there's reasons why sometimes it's going to happen. And I'm going to explain that in this week's video. So keep watching and find out. Hi there, it's Tran here from Feel Good Hypnosis. I'm a hypnotist and clinical hypnotherapist. And well, it's December. That's why the tree's up. I did promise in the last couple of weeks the tree's gonna be up soon. So I thought I'd better come in here and show off our lovely Christmas tree. Hope you like it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move on to why you're here to learn about hypnosis. Every week I show a little street hypnosis clip and uh, then break it down in a tutorial fashion afterwards. So do stay tuned after you see the street hypnosis clip to find out some interesting topics, tips and discussions around what you see in the video. This week I, in my mind, do a less than in perfect induction and I'm going to break down and discuss exactly why I feel that was the situation. I'm also going to talk about the difference between skeptical people who are skeptical about hypnosis versus resistant people, people who are resistant against the idea of hypnosis. Uh, I raised that topic in last week's video and Juan Valdez left a comment in the comment section below that video saying I'd like to understand more about the difference. So there's his comment there. If you have a comment, please leave it in the comment section below. Just drop a comment. If you see something in this video that I'm not explaining well or you'd like more information on, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Or if you just want to tell me how much you like these videos, please do leave a comment in the comment section below. I love reading them. And as you're seeing here, I love to feed back and give responses to those if I can in future videos. And don't forget, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the big red subscribe button and the bell notification button next to that subscribe button so you get notified every time a new video comes out from myself. But enough of that, let's move on and watch the video and then stay tuned for the tutorial breakdown. This here, close your fingers together. Okay, stand up straight, your feet together. Okay, and again, as I said with the, the, the girl there, if you can start my finger and just imagine my finger as you close your eyes down and imagine a finger right between the two palms. And as you imagine that finger there, just pretend and imagine there's very strong magnets in the palms of your hands and feel those magnets now. And as you feel that now, as I click my fingers, feel those magnets getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. That's right, tugging and pulling and pulling and tugging, tugging and pulling together. And in a minute those fingers are going to touch together. And when those fingers touch together, those palms will pull together. As those magnets get stronger and stronger and stronger inside your mind now. That's right. Tucking and pulling and pulling and tugging and tucking and pulling together. And when those fingers touch together, they're going to lock and stick together. And those palms are going to lock and stick together just as much as those fingers are locked and stuck together. There you go. And feel that now getting stronger inside your mind as those just lock and stick together. And then in a minute, I'm going to count from one to five. On the count of five, you're going to try and pull those hands apart and realize those hands are stuck together, cemented together, locked together. So one, feeling those magnets getting even stronger. Two, like they're super glued together, cemented together. Three, really tight, really locked and stuck. Four, like they're carved from a single piece of wood. As you feel that now, sticking them together, locking them together. And on the count of five, five, try and pull those hands apart and find they're locked and stuck together. Really try and feel them pulling closer and closer and closer together. And the harder you try, the harder they stick because you're already in hypnosis. And your legs are supporting your back, support you as you go sleep way down, deeper, 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 relaxed. The deeper you go, the more relaxed you feel, the more relaxed you feel, the deeper you go, drifting, sinking down, even deeper still. And as you drop that hand down by your side, just go ten times deeper, ten times more relaxed, way down. So deep, so relaxed, way down. Your legs will support you, your back will support you as you go drift deeper into hypnosis now. In a minute, I'm going to count from one to ten, I count from ten, you kind of can count from ten down to one, but every count I count goes go down even deeper still. So 10, going deeper now, 9, even deeper, 8, so deep, so relaxed, doubling that relaxation with every count, 7, 
and six. So deep, so relaxed. Five, way down. Four, even deeper still. And when I'm going to get to number one, and when I get to the number one, every suggestion I make will become your reality. So three, and two, and one. Way down, way down. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three, and the count of three, you can open your eyes, you'll be back with us. But every time I say the word sleep or deeper sleep, your head will pop back down to your chest, your eyes will close, and you'll go ten times deeper still. Feeling ten times better with every time you go down deep inside. So one, two, three, open your eyes. How was that? Sleep way down, way down, even deeper, even more relaxed, ten times deeper. Letting all the sounds around you, people talking in the background, help to absorb you into this wonderful feeling of hypnosis. And then I'm going to count from one to three and the count of three. You're going to open your eyes you're back with us. And when you open your eyes, I'm going to start spinning your hands. And as I spin your hands, you're going to find you cannot stop your hands from spinning. Your hands are going to just keep turning round and round. You cannot stop your hands from spinning. Nod your head that you understand. One, two, three, open your eyes. How's that feel? That's how hypnosis is. Let's take your hands here. What I'd like you to do is just start spinning your hands like that there. Just keep spinning your hands like that there. And notice what happens as I let go, your hands just keep spinning. As I click my fingers, your hands spin faster, faster and faster. Now when I click my fingers, they change direction. Try and stop your hands from spinning and they spin faster. Try and stop your hands from spinning and they click faster. Really try and stop them and find this spin even faster. Now when I click my fingers, they spin in the other direction. Try and stop. Spin faster. Try and stop and spin faster. Really try. What's that like? Painful. <laughs> and sleep now. Way down. Deeper, deeper. Deeper, relax. The deeper you go, the more relaxed you feel, the more relaxed you feel, the deeper you go. Drifting, sinking down, even deeper still. So I hope you liked that video. It went well, but not very smoothly in my mind. And I'm going to explain why I feel that was the situation. Hope you maybe saw some of uh, that within the video yourself, but stay tuned. We're going to talk about that. But let's talk about first, because just to finish off what we discussed last week, this idea between skeptical and resistant people. You can see in this short clip here from last week where the chap says, I didn't think it was going to work. Five, five. <laughs> And even before in other videos like this girl here, where as you'll hear in a minute, you're, she was I was discussing, well, there's only one way to find out because she said, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Well, because maybe she was just bluffing and there's only one way to find out. Okay. Okay. So it's okay to be skeptical. In both those clips and many more, sometimes people come up to you and say, I don't know if it's going to work. That means they're skeptical of the process, which is different from resistance. If someone's resistant, they'll walk up saying, no, oh, you know, you can't hypnotize me. I'm not going to let you hypnotize me. They'll often even be very bodily gestured with their arms crossed and sort of scurls and you can't hypnotize me. That's resistant because they're putting up a, a, a clear signal that I don't want this. Whereas a skeptical person will go, oh, give it a go, but I don't think it'll work. Think, for instance, of maybe some IKEA flat pack furniture. For some people, You'll give it to them and say, can you build this? And they'll say, no, I can't build that. I don't want to build that. I'm not a furniture builder. They're being resistant to the whole idea of even giving it a go. Or if somebody's skeptical, go, well, I'll give it a go. I'll unpack it. I'll look at the instructions. But I've never done this before. So I'm you know, not sure if it's ever, I'm ever going to be able to build it properly. You know, I've heard rumors that these things are not easy to build. So that's someone that's skeptical. That's someone that's just not too sure about it. So there's the difference between skeptical and resistance. Someone that's skeptical doesn't mean they don't want it. Now, there might be a level of resistance because they're just not too sure. It all becomes, again, it's all part of a mindset. If you're skeptical about building that furniture, chances are you'll blunder somewhere along the way. It's almost as if you're convincing yourself, I'm not going to be able to do it. For other people, if they're really focused on giving it a good try and really want it to work, then they'll build it, you know, and it's the same with hypnosis. If someone's not sure if it's going to work, but they're willing to follow along the instructions and do everything I ask them to do, then it will work. Whereas someone that's resistant, when I say close your eyes, they'll go, why? Why do I need to close my eyes? Now, hypnosis is, again, it's not some superpower that I just emanate out of my body into their body and, you know, they do what I ask them to do. 
hypnosis is might be asking them to follow a set of instructions and it's up to them to either follow the instructions or just be resistant to them and not follow the instructions. And if they don't follow the instructions, surprise, surprise, it's not going to work. So it's a voluntary process. It's always a voluntary process. The person that I'm hypnotizing is always in control. The skeptics that want to learn are giving me permission by following my instructions. So I'm not taking control of them. I'm not taking control of anyone, skeptical or otherwise, or resistant. So if you don't want it to happen, if you're resistant to the idea, you know, you, you're going to be resistant to the idea. It's not going to work. You will resist it. So I hope that explains it in a bit more depth and a bit more detail. So let's look at this week's video. Was he resistant or just skeptical? Or was he a great subject? I don't think it was a perfect subject. Right away when I say put your hands out like this here, he, he follows my instructions. So he's following what I'm asking him to do. And I say, you know, in a moment your hands are going to come together. Now a little hypnotic tip. When I say feel that magnet in your hand, I'm actually touching his hand. So there's a bit of what we call ambiguous language here. When I say feel that magnet in your hand, and when I say feel that, his brain at some level is going, yeah, I can feel it. And I say the magnet in your hand, and that makes a connection between the touch and the magnet that's just purely imagined because there's no magnets, I'm not putting magnets in his hands or his gloves in this situation. So there's a nice bit of ambiguous language, and that ambiguous language plays an important part in hypnosis. It allows, again, the subject to be free to interpret the way they want to. It gives them the scope and the freedom to think of things in the way they want to. So as his hands are coming together, it's a very positive sign. It's a very green flag that the hands are moving nice and slowly and nice and smoothly. But there's one point where he just does this here. Now, in my experience, you know, and, and again, everyone's different. So just, you know, you have to calibrate your own experiences. In my experiences, the hands gradually come together. They don't slap together at some point. So that was almost to me a conscious movement on his part. Because of that movement, I want to reinforce the idea that his hands are stuck together. And the whole principle of the magnetic hands is that the hands will come together and they will stick together. So I give him a bit more space, a bit more time. So I say, when I count to five, so I don't say test them now, but when I count to five, test your hands and your hands will not be able to come apart. So I'm giving him that space of me counting in which to really imagine what it's like for his hands to feel stuck together. Remember, there's no glue and there's no real magnets. So the only reason his hands will stick together is because of the power of his imagination. Now, he's followed everything, all the instructions and I'm counting down to one, letting those hands really feel like those magnets are sticking together, two, getting stronger and stronger, three, etc., right up to the number five. And then on the number five, I say, now go ahead and try and move those hands apart and find they're stuck. Now I'm using that old technique, that old word try, because try implies failure and we've discussed that in previous videos. But this time, when I say try and move them apart, his hands sort of move like this. Now, there's a, as much as the hands are coming apart and it's not what I had intended and that's not what I was instructing, there's still a positive edge to this because his hands are moving slowly apart as if some imaginary force, again, there's no real magnets, but some imaginary force inside his mind is pulling his hands together and he's fighting against it. So, I just say getting tighter and tighter and I reinforce the idea that they're now pulling together and you can see the vibration in his hands. If, and, and trust me, I've done this enough times and I've had enough people that were resistant that when I say, you know, try and pull your hands apart, they go, hmm, they're not stuck. They just move them and, and, and the, the situation has changed completely. The mood of the moment has changed completely. But for him, he's, he's doing this. So there's a positive sign. So I keep reinforcing, don't stop what you're doing, have faith in the process and keep doing what you're doing. Now I move on from a magnetic hands induction and it might not be obvious, so I move on from magnetic hands induction to another type of induction, a little jolt induction. So I grab his two wrists very lightly and go sleep. It's not a big jerk, it's not a violent jerk, it's just a small sleep as you saw in the video to just move his body and jolt him and shock him into that altered state of hypnosis. 
and he drops down, his hands drop down by his side. And you see me moving his arms and testing the relaxation in his arms and dropping his arm down by his side. It's nice and relaxed and his head's dropping nice and fluidly. So that gives me this good connection, good suggestion that yes, the induction has worked. So I count them down, I do the deepener, I count down from 10 down to one. And again, slight mistake on my part because I start to say I'm gonna count up, but my usual pattern, my usual routine, doesn't matter whether you go from one to 10 or 10 to one, but I like counting down because when you count down, it's, it implies we're going down deeper. There's no magic to it. Many people I know count up, but in my case, I got tongue twisted and uh, started to say the wrong thing. And look, there's no harm in doing that. You just correct yourself and, and he'll understand. So quite 10 down to one and do the deeper and then I fraction him and say one, two, three, wide awake. And I say, well, how is it? And he's a bit sort of, you know, quiet. He's, he doesn't know what to say. And I fractionate that trance by saying asleep. And as soon as I put my hand in front of his eyes, his eyes close and he drops down nicely. Another very green flag after those few positive, you know, possible red flags in there that the induction has worked well after all. So I move on from that to the first skit. And in this case, I'm going to get the, his hands to spin and he's not going to be able to stop them. Now, as you saw in that video, when I said stop, his hands stopped. Now, was that a failure of that suggestion or was that him just hearing me say the word stop? And even though I'm saying you will not be able to stop them, I can't. We often say in hypnosis this idea that you the unconscious mind can overly well process negatives. So when I say you won't be able to stop, Sometimes they'll just hear the word stop inside their head. So there's a mixture of those situations. At one point when I'm saying, what's that like after I've spun his hands in a few directions and they do pause at times so that it's not going fluidly as I'm suggesting, but again, he's interpreting it the way he wants to interpret it. You can see again, when I say, you know, stop and change direction, he just stops and, and there's that froze moment. But during that process, when his hands are spinning fast, I said, what's that like? And he says, it's painful. Now, you always want to make sure you don't cause real pain. And I think he just means it's a pain in the butt, excuse the language. But, you know, I don't think he means he is in agony over it. Uh, it's very important if you ever get any signs that anything you're suggesting is giving people real pain that you stop immediately. And I don't, you know, overly extend that once he says that, but I do not think he was in pain because he was going, it's pain. And he's sort of smiling as he says it. So it didn't go perfect in the induction because his hands came apart when I told him his hands were going to stick together. But it wasn't a failure because there was some sort of imaginary force inside his mind that was causing some sort of resistance as his hand was moving. And when I see that, I move on to a different type of induction. So you're actually seeing in a way two inductions inside that one skit, but it's not you know, obvious to anyone on looking and hopefully maybe it wasn't even obvious to you as you watched the first time, you might wanna skip back and watch that again. But I transitioned just seamlessly and quickly into a different type of induction to give him that little jolt shock and drop him down to hypnosis that way. So there's always a good way to segue between um, different inductions if one's not going perfectly right. And then again, the suggestions. In my mind, there was a bit of concern, a bit of a red flag in terms of me saying they will not stop and they stopped. But again, as I explain, sometimes that's just the way he absorbs it inside his mind. So I hope you learned both about sceptical and resistant people today and about you know, possible red flags and just how to work around them. And the, the real way to work around them is just to keep going and move from one thing to another smoothly without interruption. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you give it a like, and don't forget to click the big red subscribe button and the bell notification button so you get notified every time a new video comes out from myself. If you have any questions, have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. I always like, as I said, and as I did this week, uh, like responding to them and maybe even creating a video just for you if you have any questions or individual situations that you would like to discuss. In the meantime, I release a new video every Sunday. I hope to see you next Sunday and thanks very much for watching.